So we're gonna have a budget discussion. So it's the town hall departments, TV5, Park and Rec, and Historic Commission. Yeah, Park and Rec couldn't make it, so I've rescheduled them for another time. Okay. The Historic Commission is. I haven't seen them. So All right. They're local funded. <laughs> All right. So uh, who wants to start off for town? I can dispose of a number of uh, uh, budgets that uh, either fall directly to me or uh, are on their team. Uh, starting with the moderator, local funded, uh, mandatory at uh, $100 per year. No change in that budget. Uh, select board budget. Uh, the only real change there is uh, an increase of $300 to the uh, town reports based upon historical uh, historical uh, 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 pattern and an adjustment downward for the administrative assistant position based upon new hire. It's nice to have Bridget with us. Uh, everything else there is level funded based upon historic uh, patterns. Um, Administrative uh, town administrator. Uh, the only change to that budget is the uh, contractual increase, seventeen hundred and thirty-three dollars, which represents a two percent increase, which adjusts that budget overall by one point three, one point nine three percent. I'm sorry. Can I? Sure. Can I just stop? Yeah. Um, just looking at the budgets, the details that we have in here. You know, again, we've got FY. We've got historical, but it's what was voted, 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 right. then requested. So where do we get to look at the actual? So the there? actual information, I was hoping that Vadar would be able to provide that for us, and I'm still getting that information. I, I have it. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. I have it back to um, Gail was able to send it to me this afternoon, and I was also able to get logged on this afternoon. So we now have uh, information back to 2012 on historical spending. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 So. What, what is What is the first? You have it. We don't. I worked at it, right, Gail? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Take a couple of tries. I worked guys. at it. <laughs> Just Just it. Just Just it. Just it. What we've got, what we. We have to. Yeah, we have what we can look at for right now. Yeah. So we want to keep going down through those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but then could we? Then we'll go we back and ask about the. Get it. Yeah. All right. The um, finance committee. Uh, um, can I assume it's level funded? Yes. For the reserve fund as well. Okay. Uh, then we had. Going down to town council, I level funded that at $36,380. Conservation Commission level funded at $3,050. Planning Board, I didn't receive a budget from them, so I level funded them at $11,780. Same with Board of Appeals at $3,665. Long range plan I didn't receive a budget from, so I level funded them at $2,500. And insurance uh, went up by 1.8%, which is the projection that we were told at the uh, trade show, mm -hmm. uh, from $111,000 to $113,000, an increase of 2%. And then the town buildings so that's is a little bit more complicated. So Which insurance is that? This would be my. Uh, so this is this the, would be for the uh, liability and the property insurance. Mm -hmm. The overall increase to the town government budget series 100, without a two percent increase or a step increase for the employees, but the contractual increases uh, and all other uh, adjustments is a 0 0.89 percent increase. I'll 
save the discussion for the uh, buildings uh, since we have a lot of people here tonight. Uh, perhaps you'd like to ask them directly about their budgets. All right. Do you want to start with town accountant since it's up to the top? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, what my the only ones that really went to act was the uh, software maintenance. Um, it was pretty much level funded, but I'm putting back that fourth license, which was on last last year. I landed up with three, found out we really needed the fourth, so that's back in there. And then the auditors, um, it went up when it was budgeted. I didn't. We did not have a final number until like the day before town meeting. It increased by 500. So I'm anticipating another $500 increase. So I increased the audit budget about $1,000 to uh, put in for that. And that's the only, everything else is what I found it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Linda, do you, do you have the, can you look quickly at your list of actuals, what was spent, and tell us what it's been. For the bottom line of the budget? For the accounting, yeah. yeah. Um, is the new one 95609, is that what yes, you said? Yes, there. Yeah. For, for the current year, we're 94149. You want me to go back? So, that's from 92599. For 13, it was 85105, and for well, it was. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong. Yeah. Well, you're, you're I'm reading allocated and not expended. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let me right. let me start again then. Uh, well, you can use for it fiscal 14, 89505 was spent. For 13, 84, 543, and for 2012, 85, 840. Gail, if you spent less than what was appropriated, is that likely just like tuition and meetings and some things you... Okay, last year, uh, what happened was Vader took the cloud licenses. Usually mm -hmm. I paid them in the full year for April, but they prorated it. So I, was, I turned back about three, almost $3,000. Okay. And that's why I did not spend that last year. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, so... One more thing on the VAR. So we had five licenses. Mm -hmm. We're now down two. to four. four. Right. And that's what we want is four. Mm -hmm. And that works much better for everybody. Is anybody getting knocked out, Gail, during budget season? Or are they able oh, to get probably, in? probably, but do you buy a fifth license for that two-week season? Right. I mean, yeah. other than that, I haven't heard any other complaints. I don't know if others <coughs> have had any complaints, but no one's complained directly to me. Okay. Okay, so no more questions on accounting. Oh, just one. But the um, the audit was that a three year contract? Uh, we've been we or have just not gone back up to it. We just um, an annual renewal. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and so when will they have the quote for us? Pardon? When would they have the quote for us for next year? Um, we can, I can give them a buzz, but last year I think David had tried contacting them earlier. They gave us one, and then like a week before a town meeting, we got a contract for about $500 higher than what they quoted. So. Right. Okay, so this is just a guesstimate. We don't... Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but they've been following this pattern pretty much, so... Mm -hmm. All right. Can I ask you? Gail, when we have weeks like we did the last few weeks and we're all calling individually and spending time with them, is that all included in the license fee? Yes. All right. For those that had a call Paragus, though, that is not we will be built for time with Paragus. Because mm -hmm. Paragus spent the day with me trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> so why do we have this why do we have a whole day of Paragus? Because uh, I could not enter Vader. Vader was having a tough time figuring it out. They told me to contact their IT people, and the IT people came over. The two of them figured it out and got going. So, so was this the operating system, system issue or a different one? 
I'm not sure. I know, all I know is Vadar upgraded their Citrix, and a lot of the computers could not get on there. I, I'm just not an IT okay. person. Okay, now that's, so Ted Cormier from Vadar, he was at the MMH conference, and mm -hmm. so what he explained was that our computers are running an older version of XP, and I mean, everybody's... Some of them. Yes, yeah, some of them. Like yeah, some two. of them. Like but two. then, but and their software should work with a couple of them, but we don't. Well, but this is an issue because when you don't have consistency across all of your computers, every time something goes wrong, it goes you're, wrong everywhere. You're on the mercy right. of the vendor to say, well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be that, it could be that, and you wind up spending more time troubleshooting than it would have cost you to just make sure you had a standard implementation across the board. So any vendor that you're interacting with, you know exactly what you're running. You know, for, for operating system service packs, uh, your, your antivirus software, everything is standardized. And then when the vendor announces an upgrade, they do it well in advance, and then your IT people have a chance to react to that to say, are we running the minimum requirements or not? Oops, we better upgrade this, or there's a known problem with a conflict here. Yeah. So it's just that we just have kind of one-off implementations all over the place, so it's a really nasty and an expensive environment to deal with. That's exactly right, and it's very time consuming, and it's computer by computer. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually run one at the office, and then I have it on my laptop. Ironically, it's my office one, where he spent a half hour on me to find out my system was behind, and I couldn't, I actually could not download the new program onto my office computer, which is newer than my laptop, but I could do it on the laptop. I have to be a certain level, I have max. So, I would be completely out, you know, have no access right now to it if I, if I was relying on my office one. If I'm a town department, what does that mean? Are there some departments completely left out? Well, what we had talked about a number of years ago, and I think it was four years ago now, um, some of us got new computers. And it was supposed to be a rolling annual mm -hmm. upgrade. And there, didn't happen. there haven't been any upgrades right. since I, until a computer crashed. And then it's you know, you're in crisis mode. And it just ends up costing a lot more money. And the, it's the, it's not just the cost of calling Paragus, it's the downtime of people not being able to get their work done, which is what is more disconcerting to me. I mean, exactly. we just heard the police chief two weeks ago, not last week, two weeks ago when he came in, um, and he said he couldn't access Vadar to help him do the details of his budget. So thanks, thanks, Gail, for going over your budget. Thank you. <laughs> so next one, the assessors. How are you doing today? Pretty good. You feeling better? Yeah. Good to see you. Go ahead. Uh, the only big increase we have <coughs> is software maintenance. And that's a sizable increase from $6,900 this year to 12450 next year. Uh, that involves, we've got a capital article coming forward for this next year, switching from Vision version 6.4, which is what we've been using, we've been upgraded to 6.5, switching over to 7.0. This maintenance increase would switch us over where we would have cloud storage. We would actually just have a workstation in our office and all of our data would be stored at Vision. We've had a, a number of issues in the last 15 months with our computer. It's a 32-bit Windows 7 and Vision needs it to be a 64-bit Windows 7. So it continually <coughs> crashes, crashes, crashes. Uh, we, in the last 15 months, we probably been three months without our program. It, it wouldn't work. So this would, if our computer crashed, would allow us just to switch computers and we'd be able to log in and have access to our data. How's your data stored now, Dan? Is it stored locally or? Uh, right now we have a standalone. Yeah. We back it up. I put it on a flash drive. It gets backed up whenever I make changes or on a weekly basis. And then that gets loaded on a flash drive. Actually, it's several flash drives. I just rotated. 
So is this only for the vision software? That's all, that increases strictly for the vision software. But is that line only for vision? Uh, no, the vision, oh, I put it right here. Right now, we are at, uh, it's 69.50, I mean 6,900. Vision, it would go from 3,600 to 9,000. And then it also includes Point, which is going up a couple hundred dollars, and our GIS website program, which is $2,000 a year. But the majority of that is, is vision. Yeah, are you saying that you've crashed now? Uh, no, right now we're working, but we, last year, actually it was, when we were getting ready to do bills, December of, November of 13, and also this year. Yeah, I planned for that to happen. I backed up what we needed to run bills on a flash drive just in case, and it, sure enough, it crashed a week before we were going to send the stuff to point for the bill conversion. Then why are we making a reserve fund transfer to have everybody be allowed to do their work? But why isn't this stuff being brought forward? Well, we, we need an IT plan, Howard. I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think for an emergency, of course. But, but, but we also but to need to sit there for a year and a half well, it, and not have it, it solved. It, it was last. It wasn't it determined was, what was wrong, Howard, right. until yeah. this but time. It's, but I'm just saying, to continue for that length of time not being able to do your job is it's unacceptable. I mean, we have money set aside to solve some of these problems and we should be using it and managing. I mean, a lot of this stuff comes down to just management. I would agree. Well, the problem we ran into, and uh, Dan can tell you, is Paris comes out and goes, yeah, there's nothing wrong. I mean, well, there's nothing wrong with Until he turns it on the next day and goes, so there's nothing wrong with the there's nothing wrong with the computer. The computer sits there, you turn it on, it runs, you can go on the internet, you can log on to it, but then when you go well, when you go contact your software, it doesn't work. The problem a couple months ago was we couldn't connect to the internet and the program when it goes through wouldn't allow it to run. Hmm. It turned out it was a faulty USB port and that took six weeks to correct. To Fault, figure out. So that's how you connect. Which I figured out. Exactly. So it sounds like there's a whole another issue of the quality of service that we're currently being provided. How old is the computer? My computer is about four and a half or five years old. Mm -hmm. However, the, the computer that has XP is only three. What? It, it was purchased mm -hmm. and it came loaded with XP. The one that won't run beta right now. It's a three, maybe three and a half year old computer. And that's right. the one you're having trouble with? The newer ones? No, that's the one that won't run Vadar. That's a different department. But that, that computer was purchased and it came with XP on it. And I questioned it. Why does this have XP when, when Windows, it have yeah. Windows 8? Yeah. Actually, no. You want 7. Well, Windows 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eight. They've got most eight, of the kinks up now. <laughs> eight speeds off. Uh, uh, <laughs> I won't give up my seven. With some of the programs that, that we deal with, yeah, it's not so good. We know your preference. All right. So any other questions about the assessors? Yeah, just because it is so big can we just reiterate that big increase on the software maintenance it's, it's for vision it, it's for a new or it's um, no we're going to capital request in for 8,000 which will purchase a new computer convert our existing database oh, okay, and that's install it on the new one this is the annual Okay, so software this software licensing maintenance agreement. <coughs> so it's a higher price for the same thing. Uh, it's a different program. Okay. And it's cloud storage. But it, it would be cloud storage. And it will continue. This is we're if, at a new level, mm -hmm. and that's 
It's not going to yeah, go down it, it the next year. Yeah, it wouldn't go down. No, okay. it would be, there. What a new, it would new plateau. Tick up slightly each year. Okay. Can, can I just up. say one of the one of the things I'm just concerned about because you have a capital request in for a new computer. Um, I'm just worried about perpetuating a little bit of what we've already mm -hmm. done and gotten ourselves into hot water on. And a common practice where, it's where we have all these different departments running, you know, disparate software applications that have different requirements, some cloud-based, some not, um, is to have um, an IT, um, you know, basically just a, you know, what's the current state of affairs and they come in and they'll take an inventory of all of the equipment you're using they'll take an inventory of all of the software applications that we need they'll address if there is any new software that you know we might be contemplating you know in a, in a budget or whatever and then do an assessment and say okay you know here's really where you need to be because my fear is that clearly it sounds like you know you need to upgrade your hardware but maybe there are a couple of departments who got new hardware two years ago or whatever. But we're just going to keep chasing our tails here if we don't have an actual plan. And I'm wondering if maybe the money well spent would be having a transfer done to get that sort of IT analysis done by an independent third party first. And then the question is, we already did that. Didn't yeah. We? So so part part of this is that we've been trying to get a a five-step program in place to, in order to get the, uh, the town hall computers up to where they need to be, where we have a system which is resilient, redundant, robust, uh, easy to maintain, cheaper to operate. Uh, and we've been using community innovation challenge grants in order to take those steps. Mm -hmm. So the, the kind of work that you t talked about, we were able to do under uh, a community innovation challenge grant from about two years ago. We landed another one, which was supposed to be shared with Amherst and a number of other towns through the Hampshire Council of Governments, mm -hmm. and haven't been able to get them to act on that award, which would take us to the next step. So we can't been, get the Hampshire Council of Governments to act. Exactly. Yeah, they're not responsive lately. Yeah. They're not releasing really the money. There, yeah, that's, there's that's a lot a, of questions about that. That's one hundred and six thousand yeah. dollars shared among a number of communities, so we don't get all of that. But mm -hmm. that was Maybe going to take us the next way. Oh, I, I do from time to time. I talked to uh, one of the count, the chair of the uh, the council, just this weekend, and said we really need to move on this. And when we saw Vadar, when Bernie Kupiak was there, mm -hmm. I reminded him that we needed to move forward with this as well. Mm -hmm. So we have money locked up in a grant in order to help us with some of this this uh, work that, that we need to be doing. We had also talked um, when the tri board came and met with the town hall folks uh, about the possibility of sharing some IT with the school. Um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps being able to call on Mike Duffy and that type of thing. And I don't think that's been acted on either. Mm -hmm. um, I would feel very comfortable calling Mike Duffy, whereas sometimes I kind of think, you know, I'm looking at 15 minute shifts with Paragus. So, right. so how, how is Paragus actually? I get the feeling Paragus is not the best to use. Well, their, their work is okay, they're expensive as anything, though. Well, yeah. they're <laughs> they do come and they charge us a vote on yeah. buying a laptop. You know, I mean, there's kind of some weird things going on there, so. Are we locked into some sort of uh, no. approved no. vendor We're list? Locked We're not locked in. They're part of a, of a regional uh, IT in initiative by Hampshire Council of Governments. Oh, so Paragus is actually a preferred vendor for? Right. Okay. So, so the, I mean, there are other. The council of Governments went out with a bid, so it's a county bid. Yeah. yeah. Lots of things. What, was there something you had mentioned an uh, initial grant from two years earlier? Was there a report or something out of that? Did uh, something come of that? Yeah, so I'll go back into my files and find out. But that was part of part of what we did was we standardized the platforms so that we could take the next step, mm -hmm. as well as uh, as. Uh, uh, it was an act, it was acted on. 
Yeah, it was, an, okay. it was acted on, and there was another step in there to get us closer to cloud-based compu uh, shared computing. So we took two steps out of five. We need to take more. And technology didn't stop evolving in the process. No, it didn't. And so. then there's the whole debate of whether the cloud is worth doing as well. So I'll leave that to other people. OK. IT is coming out of the top top, top it's, issue. It's flowing to the top. So now we know that. Let's go on to the It's not new news. David brought that up about eight years ago. So let's go. Let's go on to the assessor's budget. We just oh, no, did. Assessors. Sorry, the collector's yeah, budget. Treasure. 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 Does that make that full time in the treasurer? Thirty hours was considered full time as far as benefits go. So no, no. Yeah, but what's the full thirty five full time for retirement for according to Sarah. Yes. Well no no, you so so people in town hall, your normal work day your work week is thirty five hours, it's not a forty hour week. Correct. previous year and we did over its and generally do and I um, I'm going to try to keep it to the thousand dollars I'm requesting I uh, my estimate is 1261 for the supplies that we need in that office and that is a lot of it is uh, envelopes and toner because of check printing and paying the bills it uses up a lot of that and uh, the only thing that it's not Increase, but I've broken out the um, mileage and meals and the surety bonds just for tracking purposes because the surety bonds are required and it is a required amount based on the money standard in the town. So, in your employee summary, it's really now the budget you're presenting to us is. One full time treasurer, one full time assistant treasurer. Correct. Any questions? How many hours a week are spent doing payroll? Payroll itself? Uh, yes. Depends on <laughs> the situation. Depends on the it week. Can go, it can go anywhere from if it's just the town, sometimes I can get it done within a few hours as far as processing it and just getting it entered and sent out. Then it comes back in and I process what comes in and the deductions and the benefits, etc. Uh, school payroll week could take longer. Even a regular town week could take a day or more, depending on situations and phone calls I have to make to question things. So if we cut that down to every other week instead of every week, at least eight hours. I would say, yeah, a few. Definitely. Since you started on that, 
So how do you receive the payroll from Blue's Fire, EPW, and everybody else? Is everybody it submits their timesheets. It's a... Paper timesheets? Paper. Mm -hmm. So the people, the, the clerk at Public Works, they just write down everybody's time? From they have, their administrative assistant in the highway department takes the time cards and puts it into a sheet and then breaks it out by what accounts it's to hit for each employee. So each employee has a list with the accounts, the uh, general ledger account staff that would be charged for their time. And then a summary sheet is attached to it for the accountant's office. So we enter it based on that. Same thing for the police department. And then for all the other departments, each person enters, uh, submits a timesheet. And then the school department, they do theirs in Excel format and they email that to me. Can you, do you take the Excel and just import it into the payroll system? Or you have to hand retype it? I, I, I sort it and, no, I don't have to retype. Well, I have to input the hours into the system or just if they're salary employees. Joan, do you know if the, the software provider that, that we're using now, is there any sort of an electronic um, user interface so that the departments can submit the payroll and then you approve it to eliminate the data entry? I would have to check on it. We've never approached it. Okay. So the, I have to go back to the before when you were working both departments, mm -hmm. um, I guess we didn't ask Gail, are you keep, you're keeping an assistant town? Of I haven't hired anybody. I have another issue. I only have one computer. I'm on it 95% of the time. I really can't hire anybody unless I get another computer in that office. So I, uh, assessors, uh, their clerk's been helping me out. Joan just has uh, hired somebody and, and she's been helping me out. We've been splitting the cost on her. Um, to help with data entry. Okay. So what do you figure you're going to use for hours? Um, it's more data entry, so I'm, I'm okay keeping it at the 10 hours. If I can find somebody and they have to. Since you went back, I'll ask my question now. <laughs> so how do people submit purchase order requests to you? Is it on paper? On paper. And, and I have to have the original invoices attached or else I can And, and when you process bills, they submit mm -hmm. you the, the Invoice and, they, mm -hmm. and the packing slip saying it showed up or some type of some documentation. Departments, some departments do do a, like a packing slip. Some of them just authorize the invoice itself. So you just get a stack of papers to process. Yeah. Okay. Beta has a purchase order module. Just Is this person, the assistant treasurer, going to be doing um, a lot of the HR part of the treasurer? What are doing now? Uh, whatever I'm doing now. Yeah, and that's part of it. The I'm benefits. Right now. Pardon? I'm not running for treasurer. Oh. I have personal reasons. I'm not running. You're not running? Yeah. I didn't know that. So you. It's a recent okay. decision. Okay. It's one I've struggled with. Yeah. Um, sorry to hear that, but you have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what you do do. Mm -hmm. Um. So you're going to stay. I hope to. I hope so, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. So, so right now, the, temp the temporary person is doing a little bit of it's data entry. It's just doing data entry. Yes. So because that, I felt, you know, it's only for two and a half months. Don't teach me. So that. why hire someone and train them to do all of that? And okay. It didn't make any sense. So I do have. Connie has kindly offered four hours. She's coming in Mondays for four hours and Tuesdays for four hours to help with payroll. And then this other person is doing data entry in terms of receipts and, uh, and the expenditures. Yeah. Okay. So they're not handling money, so the OR shouldn't have an issue. And the auditors already checked it out with the auditors. As long as they don't handle money, they have no issue with it. Okay. Any other questions for the treasurer? Uh, the only question I have is, do, um, do you know, Joan, like um, in the past every once in a while we would get, not caught so much, as, but depending on um, the, if we needed to go to tax title on anything, the legal expenses associated with that, et cetera, are we, uh, I know I'm we've been pretty clean for a while. below the uh, budgeted amount, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we do have still a few that are difficult, um, but we may have that one of them squared away at this point. Okay. I just remember, I know I'm, I'm looking a little bit at Howard here too, because I remember a, a handful of years ago, maybe maybe five or six, I guess. There was one year where um, the money wasn't in the budget, so mm -hmm. we didn't actually pursue it because the expenses weren't there. And then I think the finance committee might have done a reserve fund transfer towards the end of the year, but the money had been right. taken out. And you know, we could reasonably have anticipated that we we might need to mm -hmm. expend those funds. So, so I was just asking if you know. There's, there does still seem to be some need for that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really kind of new to that portion of it to determine. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we're ready for the next one. Um, I think that um, I did request uh, an additional $100 in tuition in meetings because Kim is now certified. Um, I requested an additional $25 in uh, mileage as well. But it's the big deal this year, um, is I'd like to take the advertising and tax title um, out of my budget and put it in a revolving fund, um, which should be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. um, each year, any properties that I have to advertise, um, the taxpayer is charged for any costs associated with advertising or the, the tax-taking process. Um, the tax title line item uh, 5422, that's to file the instrument of taking at the Registry of Deeds. In order to redeem their property, they have to pay all costs associated with that. And my thought is that it makes perfect sense to have this a self-sustaining account because um, you know, quite often times there's years where we don't have very many. And that money just sits in in my account um, until it's turned back over at the end of the year. So you know, why not take that out of the budgetary process and, and just let that be self-sustaining? Um, I had thought about this a number of years ago and approached uh, some folks at the Mass Collector Treasurer's Association. Um, and this year, legislation that has been on the table for a couple of years was actually signed by the governor, uh, Governor Patrick, before he left. So now this allows us to do this. Makes I, I think it makes good good fiscal sense to, to take anything out of your budget that becomes self-sustaining. So in the preliminary warrant, uh, the revolving account is in an article that has all the revolving accounts. There have to be some seed money in order to make it solvent right out of the bat. So there's a request also for $1,800 in that article. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. When that money has come in, do we call that revenue? Have we, in the past, in called the that revenue? In it the goes into fees. fees. What? It goes into fees. It has been yes. gone into so fees. So yes. It has been revenue. The yes. way it is now, this $800, for example, of advertising, if you spend it, it's an expense, because we, we voted it as an expense. Exactly. And when it comes in, it's going to be income. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, under the new legislation, it wouldn't be either. Right. No, it would just be a revolving account. With, with a cap. With a cap. With a cap. Yeah. So once it hits the cap, the mm -hmm. money gets yeah, sent into, into yeah. general exactly. ledger. Exactly. Yeah. I do that with the electrical inspector right, right now. Mm -hmm. questions. I think we're ready for the next one. Okay, I only have one change um, which has to do with a software maintenance. Uh, every year we pay maintenance fee for our general code, which is our bylaws online. Every other year is when there's an additional fee to have them all updated. We have, I think, 12 written books that we have to update. We get a disc, which is awesome, the entire um, bylaws as well as zoning. 
So that's what that plays in. Again, it's every other year. I know past practice was bad enough. They keep it in. You take out the amount of it back. But uh, as you see in my next one as well, it's going to be every two years. It's going to go back and forth. <laughs> you get so the prior year budgets are all flat, though. Excuse me? The prior voted amounts, they're, they're just fixed across the board. I'm not saying that. Is the bump uh, in the, the software maintenance? Day. Yeah. The request for this year, it jumped from 28 to 55. Right. Oh, I thought you were saying two years ago that we, we got the bump, too. No, I, when I, years ago, people say, you know, if you take it out, because I, I think, oh, well, I won't do this every year, because I'm trying to do it every other year, like every third town meeting. Right. These updates. So I had some of this every other year, then I'm not going to use that money every fiscal year, to be every other fiscal year. Oh, okay. All right. I see what you're saying. So, yeah. And when did you start doing that? The codification? Mm -hmm. We are on our second one. We've had it for probably four years now. So this will be our third one, which we're going to go. That's going to change on my clerk budget, but we go to the registrars. Again, there is a jump based on the number of elections per year. Our federal elections are every other year. A lot of times when you see it for 16, it's actually in fiscal 17. So the odds may be just confusing. But again, that's going to go back, down this year, and back up this year. Other questions? All right. So I'd like to thank the town hall staff for coming in and putting up with us and answering our questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Five, Richard. Oh, tap TV. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> you got me in trouble. I can't believe you did that. statement in the budget info he gave you today for today's meeting that quote the cable payments currently exceed program uh, needs unquote it is true that charter pays us more per year than we need to operate HPAT however there is a constant fear that Congress will change the law so that cable companies do not need to provide funding for public access television 
us HPAT needs every penny of that money to help with the, uh, to help it be absorbed into the town's operating budget if that ever happens. The Alliance for Community Media, ACM for short, recently sent an email to all its members, including myself, informing us that Congress is currently considering revising the Telecommunications Act. And one of the things that they are looking at is the elimination of the clause that requires cable companies to provide funding for public access television. In the email, the president of the ACM requested that as many members as possible write a letter to Congress, which I did, explaining to them how important public access television is and to leave fund the funding clause in, act. clause in the act. First time I've ever written in Congress. <laughs> My feeling is with Congress under Republican control and Republicans being pro-big business and anti-little guy, they will indeed remove the clause from the act. However, Absolutely. President Obama will likely veto the Republican revised Telecommunications Act. It is uncertain if, the, should the President not veto it and becomes law, whether funding from charter will stop immediately or whether it will stop when the current license expires. Um, the lawyer was representing the town concerning the um, cable TV stuff says it would stop immediately, but I did not see anything in the uh, cable license that said that if the law changes, they don't have to continue. And I'm just hoping they will continue um, as a good faith gesture to honor their uh, license with us. Now, where was I? Um, the ACM and its lobbyists are working hard to keep the flaws in the act and they have a good, uh, pardon me, good track record, so hopefully losing the cable TV company as a funding source will not be something we will have to worry about. Moving on to the nuts and bolts of the town's operating expenses budget portion of HPAT's budget. We are asking for $16,128 for the station manager's pay. This amounts, um, this represents about 45% of the station manager's yearly pay and includes a 5.5% increase, 5 .5 increase from FY 2015, from the FY 2015 amount. Next time I'll remember to bring my reading glasses with me. 2% COLA and 3.5% step increase. Um, remaining 55% comes from the charter operating expenses grant account. We're also asking for $600 for equipment repair, $350 for supplies, and $70 for meetings slash tuitions. In other words, professional development costs like going to a conference. These amounts have remained unchanged since 2009. Are they sufficient? Yeah. What's the total budget you're asking from the town? The total? 16 something or 17 ish? Uh, you have to It's got to be over 17. It's like another 800. Like 39, 895. I remember reading. Uh, yes. From the town's operating budget, $17,147.71. I think you rounded up to the next dollars, so that'd be 17148 Okay, so the only increase from the last year is on the, um, on, the salary. on the salary line, for the top salary line, which is 16 mm -hmm. So you, have we got any feedback on whether the Comcast charter trade was approved? I haven't heard anything new about it. It's all tied up in the Time Warner merger, so that's, that's going to plot along at glacial speed. Mm -hmm. Whenever the FCC gets around to it, I have more problems with my new charter box than I do. Yeah, yeah. Should, my new direct TV box is phenomenal. Is it? Absolutely. But if you think commercial break here, <laughs> if you think charter is bad, um, it goes out the reports right now. It's right even back. worse. Yeah. But it was great when I didn't have to have a box. Now I think they rank them as huh? worse for customer know? assistance for oh, any business. Depends how many channels you get. Okay, so is there any questions about Hadley Public Access TV? Nope. No? Okay. 
I don't think so, but I think at some point we'll want to come back and readdress the, um, the the funds that are set aside. Yes. I mean, based on the comments that are in here and what Richard has said, I think we want to come circle back on that conversation. Mm -hmm. Reassess it in what way? Put it in the context of the, the budget as a whole. I was, you know, if you look, okay. um, I understood what you're saying and what, what you're asking for mm -hmm. and what your point is about the future of public access. So mm -hmm. I understand that. And then I was just um, noting to uh, the point David, David was making about how uh, mm -hmm. What we're going to do with the municipal buildings down the road. So I think that's just, a, it's a bigger discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So is that all the budgets? Just uh, the, the last one of the, the building maintenance for four buildings um, on page 41 of the budget book. What's the uh, number? Of budget number 490. On page 41. 41 on the budget book and budget 490. Uh, this first one would be Senior Center 192. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, I told you 490 and that's the building maintenance budget yes. and uh, we should be uh, 192, 196, 198 oh, and 199. Okay. Yeah. All right, sorry for that curveball. Well. Yeah. All right, so 192 is the senior center. And uh, the, the big change there is a reduction in the custodial services of $3,100 based upon current uh, service that we're receiving and being billed for. Uh, so I think we can reduce that budget uh, from 11,100 down to 8,000. Uh, oil seems to be light based upon historical trends, so I increased that by a thousand. What did we? I'm sorry, Dave. What did we spend on oil last year? Do you have that? Uh, it would be. I know we're over. On that budget, uh, twenty thousand seven ninety-two. Thank you. Twenty-seven. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Seven ninety-two. So it was just uh, uh, just two ninety-two over um, the budgeted amount of twenty thousand five hundred. What's under this year? No, we just got a oil bill, bill in, so we're going to reassess how we're doing. Uh, so what was the price? Are you fixed? Are we fixed in our fixed. Yeah, we Yeah, we're fixed under the FERCOG contract. And what's that? Um, I don't have that off the top of my head. So how many, how many times, uh, so it's not a monthly delivery, it's probably two, it's every two months? No. Uh, it depends on, uh, depends on demand. And that well insulated building? I bet you burn more oil than you think. <laughs> but it's a big tank, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay, sewer water looked like it was light by hundred and thirty dollars, so I increased that. The alarm system by fifty dollars, telephone by hundred and fifty. Total increase is actually a decrease of seventeen seventy for that budget. This you does not. You didn't look at these in the Vedar, did you? No, no. I just got back. Uh, just got into Vedar myself today, so I'll be introducing those numbers. The next building would be uh, Town Hall 196, and again, custodial services looks like it can be trimmed down, twelve hundred seventy-six dollars. Heating and gas seems to be light by five hundred dollars. Electricity seems to be light by $1,000. Alarm system by $60. Um, postage machine service, we can reduce that by $100. Computer maintenance, we're increasing that by $1,000. Uh, telephone by 300 increase. Fax supplies, we're, we're eliminating that program since the copier is now our fax machine, so we're eliminating that line item. Uh, and equipment purchase, we're reducing that by $60 for a total increase of $1,324 for that, uh, for that budget, 2.01%. Uh, <coughs> North Hadley Village Hall. So I don't want to beat computers sure. into the ground, but 
Just out of curiosity, one more time. What is the computer maintenance line? That's for when Paragus comes in? That's when Paragus comes and in. And it's only for Paragus. That's for Paragus. Is that a uh, per-visit cost or is that a contract price? Uh, we have an uh, hourly cost of, uh, I think it's $85 an hour at this point. The more towns that participate in the program, the, the lower the hourly price is. And, the, and this is for everyone in this building only? So if there's a computer issue, computer the issue over the library or the uh, or at the senior center, we can bring them into this budget as well. So this is, okay, so this is all computer. Okay. okay. North Hadley Village Hall. This is assuming that we're keeping the building for the next uh, uh, fiscal year. Uh, a slight decrease of two hundred dollars for the custodial services. Total budget of twenty thousand thirty three hundred dollars, and then the Russell School is a big increase. Um, we had a, we have a tenant for FY fifteen uh, who will not be there for FY sixteen. That tenant was paying almost all costs for that building through a revolving fund. Uh, now the revolving fund will not be able to. Uh, sustain that building, so that uh, budget increased from nine hundred and fifty dollars to eight thousand eight hundred dollars, an increase of seven thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. There is the balance of the revolving fund, which is in excess of ninety two thousand dollars right now. So we can use that money. Mm -hmm. We got the opinion from the Department of Revenue that we can use that money for operational costs for that building. We certainly have enough money to cover the operational costs as well as uh, f a fairly substantial capital costs for that building. But there will be no further revenue coming in on that building in FY16. Any questions? What else can we do with that 90? What are the what Repairs. We Repairs. We get to the building. We, we can start Dedic the process. That's, that's what we've that 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 policy, building. but now that we don't have anyone there, or, I mean, <coughs> who's restricting it to those purposes? Because we it do. came out of a revolving fund for that for that building, that we'd building. have to have it dedicated uh, to that it is, building. It is dedicated. But at this point, it's really dedicated, but I can explore whether we can repurpose the money. Question. The question is, would, I mean, we haven't decided what they really do with that building yet. Right. So if we decide we're going to keep that building and do a lot with it, then this 92 would be a good seed money to start that process too. So you don't want to. Okay. You might even be able to use it for moving costs to relocate people into that building. If that happens. Right while you're renovating something else. Mm -hmm. Swing space. Swing space, yeah. Um, I can't remember that term. I think you, I think. All right, so that's all Because if it costs you roughly $8,000 to have that building empty and you got $92,000, you're looking at, you know, five, six, seven years of sustainability while you figure out, renovate, and, and move people around and everything Not like that. Those oiler burners over there <clears throat> crap out on you. There goes the 90. It would be a good portion of that to replace those boilers. Well, you're not going to replace the build boilers in an empty building. Well, no, but if you're going to repurpose it and use it as a swing building, you're going to have to think well, about yeah, that. Oh, yeah. I might renovate that building first. Yeah. It could happen. We have to decide. That's right. Well, for real. All right. So is, is this 8800 based on... Um, it being occupied, or is it already adjusted down for keeping the heat really, really low? It's uh, just it's based upon his our history of the building when it was empty, okay. uh, turning the heat as low down as we possibly can and get away with it. Okay. Uh, and minimal minimal work on on any other system in that building, keeping the fire alarm going, keeping electricity to it, any sewer water. Can I ask a question? What's it cost to mudball it? In terms of maintaining some sort of heat? No, no heat. And he freeze it and shut it down. 
mothballers and just no no services whatsoever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that you're paying for the electricity and for the uh, alarm. Yeah. That would be it. And the phone line. You found nine hundred dollars. What the alarm? The alarm goes out. Alarm line. Yeah. Versus eight thousand. Yeah. Well, you got anything here on the Historic Commission? Last one? Um, I can tell you that they didn't submit a budget, so I level funded it. Um, Good enough. <laughs>